wanted to give you some background, but first, how many of you in the audience have been to Nicaragua? David and Hazel, I think y'all have, haven't you? Okay, we got at least two. Uh, and then how many of you have helped the work in Nicaragua in some way, either helping send someone or buying clothes or sending money or doing the reading glasses? Can I see a show of hands? Yeah, the majority of the audience has, has participated in some way, and so we're all invested in this. Uh, those of you that are not aware, uh, Nicaragua is in Central America between Mexico and South America. That's it in yellow there. Uh, before we do that, oops, better? Okay, before we do that, I need to give you the prequel to this trip, and that was the trip that uh, we did with the college group back in March of 2018. This is the group that went, the largest group that we've ever had, uh, Jared, 30 give or take, uh, and this was in conjunction with uh, uh, another group all put together. So this was the group that went, very good trip, probably the best trip we've ever had, very successful. And three weeks later, uh, the protest broke out. Nothing to do with us. Uh, <laughs> this is, you can see the traffic lights there. Uh, this is actually a street in the capital city and this is just thousands and thousands and thousands of people uh, protesting. And the response was immediate. Uh, and you can see uh, what's going on there uh, on both sides. And so it was a very tense time. This is a headline in CNN early on and uh, just uh, not a good time to be there. So we had about an 18 month gap between that spring, March 2018 trip uh, and when we went back last month. Okay, the day after we got there, I'm gonna call day one, it's actually day two, but the first day we were working, uh, we went to a little village called Los Cocos, that just means the coconuts. And uh, I guess they have coconut trees there probably. The history of the beginning of this church, uh, Francisco Cajina was in the hospital uh, there in Nicaragua. He's a, a preacher down there. And his roommate uh, was from Los Cocos. And his roommate got out of the hospital first and went home. And when Francisco got out a few days later, he went to Los Cocos to check on him and found out the guy had died. Uh, he was... I don't know, probably 30 something years old. His mother still lived there. His mother uh, was taking care of the grandchildren, not only his, but uh, several families worth of grandchildren. And so uh, Francisco started working with her in that situation uh, and began the, the work there with the church. Uh, when Jared's group was there in, in, was it March of 2018 that y'all took care of the home? For the grandmother? Okay, I was thinking it was the last trip. Uh, they raised the funds to have a home built for this grandmother, uh, and it was far better than anything anywhere in the village. The church started meeting there uh, under her front porch, uh, which didn't hold all of them. And so they had from the beginning a desire for land, and they were searching and searching, and every now and then they would. Uh, send a request and say we found something, we found something, but it was all terribly expensive uh, on the scale that we're used to for down there. And so finally they came up with a uh, piece of property that would work financially. And uh, Francisco's daughter Elizabeth uh, has become a lawyer down there in Nicaragua, so we were able to get free legal services to help with this purchase. Uh, J.D. and Julie, years ago, uh, helped her uh, get started in the schooling toward becoming a, a lawyer, uh, and she did finish that up uh, maybe a couple of years ago, three years ago, and uh, has been useful to the church down there in knowing what needs to be done. This is on the property that was found for Los Cocos, the fella with a the bicycle there in the 7-Eleven cap is the owner of the property and he came driving up and uh, got to meet him and visit with him. Uh, that upper right picture, that's his son in the blue shirt uh, and he is, this is Elizabeth in the orange top. 
he's questioning her about the property uh, that's being sold. He wanted to be sure that his father wasn't signing away everything he owned. And that's why you have a, a lawyer there. Uh, the bottom right hand picture, you can't hardly see, but uh, in between those two hands, uh, those are $100 bills that are changing hands. And so it was being counted out. This is a survey that was done that satisfied the son that in fact what was being sold and transferred that day was what they had agreed on and not taking advantage of his father. So uh, this is the legal survey that was done uh, for that. These are copies uh, of some of the legal documents. Uh, if you want to see uh, the full set, I've got them here in a folder uh, that I'm going to leave with uh, the Smiths. Uh, there's also a letter in here to you guys from the church down there. So uh, these are your copies I'll give to you right after the report is over. Uh, that bottom right hand, that is her notary seal uh, where she is able to, uh, I guess, certify the paperwork down there as being uh, legitimate. This is the property immediately after the closing. That, that was the closing you saw where the $100 bills were. We didn't go to a closing office or anything else. That was it right there. Uh, Elizabeth read word for word, front and back, single space. Of course, it was all in Spanish. Uh, but there was three or four pages of, of things. And then uh, the, the owner of the property had to put his thumbprint on there to seal everything up. This is the property immediately afterward. There's going to be a short video just as I wrap this thing up at the end uh, that'll show this in action and it does a much better job than what I could do with the still picture here. But they immediately started cleaning the property up uh, and getting ready for a worship service, a, a celebration of, of receiving the land. Everybody pitched in. I don't know if you can see that little guy's t-shirt. It says tiny but tough. And he was. He was dragging those branches off. That's Elizabeth there. Uh, she's actually using uh, a limb and raking up some of the leaves that these guys had cut down with machete. Uh, so immediately we had chairs brought in and set up and we had a worship service giving thanks to God for the purchase of this property that was made possible uh, through the sale that was done uh, a few months ago back during the, the hot period of the year. And so that funded this purchase for these people to be able to have a place to worship God. Money was sent uh, from several sources to buy food for this poor little village. Uh, they're always uh, needing a little extra. And so this was uh, Maxi Pauli, which is a subsidiary of Walmart down there. And they had uh, you know pretty good quantities of things. And you'll see that also in the video. This doesn't do it justice. Piled all on the back of a uh, little pickup and took off for the village. This is the end result of that. There were 16 families that received a sack full of food and there was a lot of stuff in there, uh, rice and beans and sugar and uh, toilet paper and uh, there was oil, there was uh, fresh vegetables so they could mix in with the, the rice and so on. So this was a, a good day for these people and it got even better after this. We decided to really make it a day of celebration, so we went into the local chicken place in Messiah, Tip Top, uh, and everybody got to, uh, to eat. Does this thing have a laser on it somewhere? Yes, it does, I think. Maybe the middle button. Middle button, okay. The uh, lady right here is the one we were talking about that's the grandma. Uh, she is married, her husband is there. Uh, but this in her lap is one of the many, many, many grandchildren that she takes care of. For those of you on this side, uh, that's her right here. That's the grandma. And you'll see her in a minute, maybe with a little happier look on her face. She's pretty content there. Uh, Don Pablo, the chauffeur, is there with a tray of food. And uh, he's always been a big help to us, uh, taking care of us, watching out for us, just treating us like family. Right, Jared? Uh, and this is Julie, uh, J.D., down in the bottom right-hand corner. Uh, whoop. What did I do, Philip? Hit the wrong button, I know. Can you get me back on? If 
Thank you. All right, JD, this is Julie now. They're in the blue shirt. This is the future of Los Cocos right there. Uh, and that's just part of them. And there were a lot of them sitting at the other tables around there too, but this is the future of the church there at Los Cocos. Okay, second day, uh, we went to the Casa de las Biblias there in Managua. That's the House of Bibles. And uh, we secondly visited a hospital there, the cancer ward in La Mascota. And then we went with uh, Jackson and uh, his group to a new work in Sontoli, which is outside of Diriamba. So uh, there we are at the House of Bibles, buying Bibles. Uh, the church here sent a work fund with us to do that. We had a request for, I believe it was 30 Bibles uh, to go to Ometepe, and we were able to buy a few more than that and leave some in Diriamba and leave some in Tipi Tapa. And uh, so we're paying out there, and you can see the stack. Uh, I have one of the Bibles, uh, not one of those we bought. I bought an extra one. So if anyone would like to see what it looks like, it's really a pretty good quality. Uh, it's got a plastic cover which stands up better in the humidity down there. Uh, but the price had gone up. The last time we were there, 18 months ago, we bought this same Bible for $8, I think. And they were $12 this time. So inflation is affecting all of the people there. Uh, and it hit us in the pocketbook too. This is going into the hospital. And it's not what you think of when we think of a hospital here. Uh, we're going in the back door here, and this is the group, the four of us, uh, and you can see the uh, hedgehogs, right? Uh, and that was another project uh, of Desiree, and so we got the hedgehogs to the hospital, and they were a big hit. This is the director of the children's cancer ward, and uh, so she's posing there with the hedgehog. We're no longer allowed to take pictures inside the hospital where the patients are, which I understand that. We wouldn't do that here either. So I can't show you the kids, uh, but it would break your heart if I did anyway. This is uh, the group. This is the doctor on the left who is the boss of the, the administrator, and then just our little group. Okay, from the hospital, then we went on to Sontoli. Uh, do you know Sontoli? Outside of Diriama? Yeah, well, I didn't either. Uh, it's way down a rough road. Uh, this is Samir on the left, and this is uh, Walter sitting down. Uh, Walter went to Ometepe with Kaylee and took good care of her. Walter has worked with Jared and Jessica and their group before as a translator. And they were doing the, the work there, having sort of a like a vacation Bible school type setting there. Uh, there's a house that's being provided for free uh, by a family that lives there, and they had this nice covered pavilion, uh, which was a great place for the kids to set up. In the green in the middle, that's Walter's wife, Abby, and you can see, of course, a ring of kids all the way around them. Uh, this is me and my twin brother. This is Jackson Sanchez. And uh, one of the comments I got down there, I'm not going to tell you the other one that concerned my weight, but uh, Jackson said, are you still studying Spanish? And I said, well, not so much. He said, I can tell. <laughs> uh, they did a skit. This is David and Goliath, and Goliath has just bit the dust. Uh, they're doing crafts with the kids. This is Walter and Abby and uh, their son, Matthias. Walter is a preacher, and uh, he lives in Santa Teresa, but he, I think, has his church is outside of Messiah. So there's just some more scenes with the kids uh, doing their activities. Of course, they had to have a pinata. Actually, they had three pinatas. And I think you'll see that in the uh, video as well. A still shot does not do justice to a pinata party. All right, day three, Kaylee uh, volunteered to go to Ometepe while the rest of us stayed behind. She took the Bibles. She took ink cartridges for the printer. Uh, that they had. They had had it for a while and they had no ink. And so she took uh, from the church here uh, cartridges of ink. Uh, also, everywhere we went, we took communion cups, which is a big deal. 
Uh, you know, we went from the glass cups to the plastic cups because it's more sanitary and you don't have to wash them. Well, they ha all they have is the plastic cups and they rewash them and reuse them and they're split and dirty and uh, anyway. So it's a big deal to get a new box of communion cups down there. While she was doing that, uh, we were back on the mainland having meetings with some of our young people to check on their progress in school and see what was going on in their lives. So we met with Kayla, Diana, Christian, and that's pronounced your Lenny. Uh, okay, Lake Nicaragua. I'm going to try to hit the right button this time. This is Lake Nicaragua and this is Ometepe Island. It's actually two I'll be careful here. This is Lake Nicaragua and this is Ometepe. It's two volcanoes uh, that are joined together. Uh, they're not dormant. I mean, they're, they're not blowing up, but uh, they're, they're, I guess, dormant, but they're smoking and there's always a possibility they could go out. Lake Nicaragua uh, has bull sharks in it. And so you have a choice between a volcano and, and a man-eating shark if you want to swim for shore. Uh, your choice. The background on Ometepe, uh, it is a volcanic island. Uh, our work there started with a medical mission that uh, Jeff uh, Hamlin and Jerry Wright were on and, and I'm sure some others from here. Uh, but those two came back with a proposal to our elders that we needed to plant a church there. And so the Durant Church of Christ has been sponsoring a, a church there on Ometepe ever since. I think we're on the third preacher at this point, but we've got a real stable family that's been there for several years now. And so this is Kaylee with all of the goodies that she took to him, and you can see there in the front uh, also some uh, of the reading glasses. The, the church was very generous in uh, gathering up and, and sending a lot of reading glasses with us, and that was a big deal. You'll see here a little bit later. Uh, Cristobal and Dulce, that's the preacher and his wife. Uh, Dulce is very active with the, the kids and uh, you know the future of the church there is looking very bright because she's got how many kids, Kaylee? Uh, she's got about 40 to 50. Yeah, 40 to 50 kids, that's all, you know, uh, by herself. Uh, this is Walter in the foreground and then uh, just the group there in the back. Is this, that's not on Obatepe, is it? No. I got these out of order. Uh, that's Walter's mom, right? Yeah, sorry about that. This is not Ometepe, but I should have left it alone. Uh, this is Ometepe. You can see the lake in the background where the three little boys are, and you can see some of the improvements that the church has paid for uh, for them down there. Uh, again, the upper right, sorry about that. That's back in Messiah, not on Ometepe, but the rest of these are. Uh, the church also helped them acquire an adjoining lot and fence it in. Uh, Y'all remember that and, and uh, put a gate in there. Uh, and so you can see those improvements as well. Everywhere we went. Uh, how many bracelets did you take, Kaylee? Almost a thousand. And she came back with maybe two or three, I think. Uh, so everywhere they went, these are uh, bracelets that have a diagram of the plan of salvation. And then she would also hand a excuse me, a card out in Spanish that explained what the, uh, the bracelet stood for. Everybody wanted a bracelet. It didn't matter if it was a kid, an adult, uh, a waiter, a bellboy. Uh, everybody wanted one, and everybody got one, right? Okay, so this is our meeting back on the mainland with uh, uh, Kayla, who is the upper right-hand corner, and this is uh, one that y'all are helping to support. Uh, she is... Uh, headed toward a, a degree as a psychologist. She wants to work with children. Uh, she grew up in, a, in hard times taking care of seven or eight siblings. She was the oldest. Uh, she wants to work with young children in children's homes and, and give them the advantage of that. Uh, the, on the left, uh, the young man in the gray shirt is Christian. Uh, and that is Diana's brother. Diana is in the white in the lower right, and Yorleni is in the yellow in the lower right. And so Yorleni is going to nursing school. Uh, Diana is in school in Managua and uh, for to be an English teacher, I think. Is that right? So we got an update from them. 
Okay, the next day, uh, this is Sayri. Uh, she wasn't able to join us there when the other ones were there, uh, but you can see she's in a nursing uniform and then in a hospital setting. Uh, she is graduating from her first level of nursing, uh, and then she has, a, I think, a year of uh, community service that she has to do before she can work and earn much of anything. Uh, and then she'll wants to go on with her education and, and advance in the, the nursing profession. This is her little boy. She's a single mom, and uh, he's quite a uh, cute little kid. And anyway, we have a continuing arrangement to, to continue helping her with her expenses and with her schooling. We want to see her succeed professionally. All right, the uh, Saturday that we were there, uh, we were able to go to Deanna's wedding. Uh, and that was another one in that picture. We arranged the dates of the trip so we could be there, and then we were afraid we would not be able to go because we thought it was in Managua. They said it was at 4 o'clock. A wedding never starts anywhere nearly on time there, uh, and we didn't want to be out after dark. so. Anyway, as it turned out, it was in her hometown, El Rosario. Uh, they started about 4.30, 4.45. We left at 5 o'clock and headed back from Managua, and we still were out in the dark, but we had Don Pablo taking care of us, and uh, we got there. We made it back. Uh, whoops. Okay, so this is Diana and her now husband, and that's her... Uh, Flower girl, ring bearer, I'm not sure. This was a, a very modest setting, a very uh, modest arrangement, and uh, it was beautiful, uh, but it just shows what can be done. And this was one of the displays that they had set up there. I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the reading glasses, because they were a, a huge hit. We left them with different preachers of different congregations, and then they went out and helped people get fitted with them. When we first got there, uh, of course, we've got all these duffel bags full of communion cups and glasses and uh, printer ink and all kinds of stuff. Every time you go through, you have to go through customs, and they always want to look and see what's in the duffel bags. I don't blame them. And so we go through and we're explaining to them, we've got hedgehogs in here and they don't know what a hedgehog is and they don't know what it's for and so we're explaining all that to them and everything was okay until they got to the reading glasses and they started looking at that and they called the supervisor over and uh, they said do you have permission to bring these in and I said no they're not prescription they're just reading glasses and they said no it doesn't matter you're supposed to have something from the Ministry of Health to be able to bring these in and we found out later didn't know it then, but we found out later that it was very common for them to confiscate those, break them in front of people, and throw them away. Uh, and that was the end of it. And we just kept talking, and uh, they finally decided they would let us go with them. And, you know, fortunately, uh, we were able to get all the glasses in, no confiscation, no problems with them. And so here are some of the recipients. We've gotten I don't know, dozens of pictures of people wearing their new glasses. And, you know, most of them are looking at a book, and so we're thinking that they probably uh, can see better to read, which is the whole point of this exercise. But uh, just a few of those, and everybody is quite proud to have received these. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. And that was our intent on the trip. That was your intent in, in sending the group to represent you in that place. And so we always want to keep that, uh, that thought in mind. Let's think about the investment that the church has in Nicaragua. <clears throat> We've been sponsoring the church on Ometepe Island since it began. That was a church plan. Uh, the church at Mead has been sponsoring Jackson, that was my twin back there, if you remember, uh, and his family for, I don't know, 12 years probably, maybe more. Uh, very successful work there. Caddo has been sponsoring Samir and his family and his brother Udell. I'm not sure I've spelled that right, uh, and his family. 
Through the years, Northwest and Bochita always sent money down there every year to buy school uniforms for the kids and school supplies that they couldn't afford. Uh, and that was an ongoing thing. Many, many preachers have been supported down there. Uh, I asked J.D. this morning how many uh, he was coordinating, and he said, wasn't sure of the count, but six to eight. Okay, saying eight now, if I counted fingers right. So uh, uh, eight that I don't have all the names of. Uh, the children's home that was uh, in existence at one time received a lot of funding from the church, uh, buying appliances, buying all kinds of things through the years uh, while it was in operation. When the children's home closed down and the children were sent back to whatever situation they were in, uh, we started a food program to supplement uh, their family's food, and that's been going on for 12 years now, and many of you have participated in that. Uh, each month, the, the family would receive a bag of food, sort of like the ones you saw there uh, in uh, Los Cocos. And that's going to be coming to an end now at the end of this year uh, because of the, the age, aging out uh, of the kids. Uh, there is a school of preaching there, BICA, the Bible Institute of Central America. From the very first class, uh, this church has been involved in providing Bibles uh, to all of the students. And we're talking about a Thompson Chain Reference Study Bible in Spanish, uh, you know, with a good cover on it. So uh, that's been something ongoing. Uh, the church started it. Several people have participated the last several years. Uh, Greg and Patty Pyle took that on uh, voluntarily, asked if they could just provide that. And so they've been doing that for several years now. Uh, this trip, we were able to take a portable baptistry down there that had been requested. The church here uh, paid for that, uh, and it's available uh, to area preachers down there. Uh, we also took, uh, I don't remember now, maybe six or 8,000 communion cups, some from Edmond, some from here, uh, and those were all distributed and will be used, I, I guarantee you. Uh, the university students, we already mentioned, uh, raised funds and had a, a home built for this grandmother in Los Cocos. The church purchased land on Ometepe to build a church building. Then they helped participate in building the building. And then the land purchase for Los Cocos. And that's a result of this sale that, uh, that went back on. Many of you helped with that, but uh, help is too light a word. Uh, these two did all of the heavy lifting. So we appreciate that and see the results of that right now. Many people have provided funds uh, for the students to attend university. Without the help here or from somewhere, they wouldn't have that opportunity, period. And so the ones that are able to make a, uh, a career uh, because of their education, it's going to be thanks to the generosity of people here. Many f families through the years have bought clothes uh, and sent those to the young people that we were dealing with year after year, sometimes twice a year. And many people have contributed extra money for food, uh, for other needs that have come up, uh, again, just continually, year by year. It's, uh, it's very common for somebody to walk up to me and hand me a check or hand me some money and say, you know, we want to want you to use this for uh, the needs of Nicaragua. And so we appreciate everyone that's involved in, in doing that. Okay, this is your cue. This video was done by Chelsea Falkenberry. Uh, many of you might remember her. She was a college student here a few years ago. Gracias, Señor, por los hermanos en Durán, que siempre, Padre, está la cuenta en compartir bendiciones.
Señor es digno de honor. El Señor es digno de honor. Vamos a darle gloria y honor. Vamos a darle gloria y honor. Él nos enseña la forma de adorar. Él nos enseña la forma de adorar. Debemos hacerlo en espíritu y verdad. Debemos hacerlo en espíritu y verdad. does a lot better job than I can. Can you get me back to the PowerPoint, please? Okay. After the trip, we get more information. Uh, Jay, you and I need to take notes here. Uh, this is what they did at Los Cocos the first Sunday after we were gone. They had their first worship service there under the palm branches and uh, had 57 people in attendance the first Sunday at Los Cocos. So uh, that's just the possibilities that are there. Galatians 6.10 encourages, let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. 
So then, as we have opportunity, let us do good to everyone, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. So opportunity plus ability equals responsibility. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 20. You know the first part real well. You probably know all of it. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself, and he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. And that's what we want to do tonight. If you have any need spiritually, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God, whatever it takes. If you're a Christian and you need to repent, don't leave here without it. If you're not a Christian, don't go home without being a new creation. So we implore you through Christ to do whatever it takes as we stand, as we sing.